while you're finishing up the warm up problem, uh, just know that next week, Tuesday, week from today, we'll take the chapter of East test. And so, excuse me, all of your homework. So the P1 to 5, the brown sheet, the brown packet that you have right now, that one, and the review assignment that you're going to get tomorrow, that, those are both these. Oh, I put two up, got the clicks there. So I get two thirds and negative one half. Agree? Okay. Extension question off of that. So now that we've solved that, What would this graph, without actually graphing it, what would this graph look like? What shape is this left side function? What do we call that? Parabola, yep. Opening up or opening down? Up because the A is positive. We know that it goes through positive two thirds and negative one half. So we know that the graph is going to look something like that. Okay. We want to know when that graph is negative or less than zero. So that would be in inequality notation. or interval notation. It would look like that, depending upon which notation we're asking for at that particular time. Okay. With inequality, we could ask for the graph, be it uh, a, on a Cartesian coordinate or on a number line. We could ask for it in inequality notation, or we could ask for it in interval notation. So be wary of those. Okay? So we are in the note packet now. Um, keep your other keep your other sheets out because we'll come back to that um, at the end here. But one of the key, how do I want to say it? properties, one of the key formulas, I think key formulas is a good way to do it, is if we're talking projectile motion. And you've probably seen this one in physics if you've had a physics class yet. Um, we'll for sure hammer out some projectile motion in the spring. Um, we'll get into a lot of uh, parametrics and launching of objects and things of that nature. And so we'll for sure get into that um this spring but the the equation is s where s is the height of the object is equal to negative 16 t squared plus v sub zero that's our initial velocity times t plus s sub zero where that is the initial height s sub zero is the initial height okay 
So we can put all of those, all of that data into that equation, T being time, obviously, the amount of time in the air. Okay. And so if we launch a projectile straight up from the ground, okay, it's going to go up, 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 up. What's going to happen to it as soon as it as soon as it leaves? What's going to happen with our projectile? It starts at 272 feet per second, but what's going to happen to it? It's going to slow down because of gravity, right? Gravity and air resistance and stuff is going to make it go slow. It's going to make it slow down, and it's eventually going to stop. And then what happens? Then it's going to come straight back down. Okay. Okay. So all of that, all of that motion, the height of that object because we're just launching it straight up. We're not launching it at an angle, so we don't have to worry about the third dimension here yet. Okay. Just that straight up and straight down, all of that height can be modeled with this equation. Okay. I think this is, is this your first one on there? Projectiles launched straight up from ground level with an initial velocity of 272 feet per second. Uh, part A says, let's write an equation to model this situation. Well, S is going to be S. Negative 16T squared is going to be negative 16T squared plus our initial velocity. What was our initial velocity? 272. So that's going to be plus 272T plus what was our initial height? Zero. So I don't even have to write that. Okay. I'm good with that because I don't have to write it because it's just your the graphic of the equation. Okay. All right. So that would be the model that represents this situation. Okay. So my question is, when will the height of the object be 960 feet above the ground? Now we can do this one of two ways. We can do this algebraically. So we could set this equation equal to nine hundred and sixty feet. We can set it equal to it and we can solve it. First thing we gotta do is we gotta get everything onto one side. Out of curiosity, is 272 divisible by 16? All of you have calculators in front of you because they made all of you get a graphing calculator. Is 272 divisible by 16? Double tap on. No. Yep. New. We can create a new page with a calculator. Yes or no? Yes. Is 960 divisible by 16? Yes, it is. Okay. So we can divide all these, but instead of dividing them all by 16, I'm going to divide them all by negative 16. So then I get t squared minus how much? 17t plus 60. Factorable. Two numbers that multiply together to be 60 and add to be negative 17. What are they? 20 and 3, but they got to be the same. Software changes are required. They got to be the same because it's plus at the end. 5 and 12. Okay. So this would factor to be t minus 12 and t minus 5. So 
So I get at 12, at 5 seconds and 12 seconds. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? What? So it's going up and it goes up past 960 feet and then it comes back down and then it would be at 960 feet again on the way down. Make sense? Okay. Let's graph this one now. So you can do the uh, control doc to add a new page. Okay. So we would want to go negative 16. Now, I would normally say t squared, but my function is a function of x. So instead of t, I've got to put x squared. Otherwise, you're going to get a syntax error because you're not going to recognize the t value. Then we said plus 272 instead of t. We're going to put x. Now, when I hit enter, I only see the first like half second, not even of it. Okay. So if I wanted to see the whole thing, I would need to adjust my window. Menu. Window zoom window settings. Now, x's are our times, right? Okay. Do we need to have negative time for this object launching? No, because we can't go back in time. We are not Marty McFly. We do not have a flux capacity. Okay. So we can't go back in time. So I don't need that. But I still like to see my, my vertical axis, so I'm going to go negative 3 there. Maximum. Well, it said it's at 960 feet at 12 seconds, right? So I'm going to go somewhere farther than 12. I'm going to go out to 20. Scale, that's totally up to you. I like to go by 1, so in this case. It's like to set my scale. Minimums now. So now y, that's my that's the height of my object. Okay? So do I need to be negative here? What does that mean? Be in underground, right? Object's not gonna go underground. Okay, we're well, gonna come back and then we're gonna stick the landing. Okay. Um so let's just say just because we're talking a, a ways up. I'm going to say negative 100 there. We know we got to go to at least 960, right? But it still goes up after that. So what are you thinking? 1500? Okay. And here, I'm going to go by, sure, I'm going to go by, I'm going to go by 100 there. And then when you hit OK, now you see your graph. Now this graph is a little bit deceiving. Okay? This graph looks like we are launching an object outwards. But this graph represents the height of the object versus time. My object is still, if my object were, were pooping, or not pooping in a pole, but if it were launching in a pole, okay? It would be in that pole the entire time. Okay? Okay? So it would, everything it's going to do, it's going to be in that vertical column that it's in. Okay? We're not assuming anything with wings or anything. Now, the reason we tell you, or we ask you this, is because now from this, we could go, we could put in a second. A second function of 960, and then what would we look for here now? Whoa, that would be nice. What 
what would we look for now? We would look for the intersection of those two. Menu, analyze, intersection. Menu, analyze, intersection. I get to go a little faster because I've got a touch screen. Whoa, tap the brakes. Okay. What else could we figure out from the graph? What would that be? The second zero, because this this first zero is at zero. Zero equals t. Okay. So we could menu and analyze this graph, and we could find out our second zero. What else could we figure out from this graph? One more bit of data that we could figure out here. Maximum height, right? Okay. So if I go menu and I go analyze, which one would I be looking for this time? I'd be looking for the maximum here now. Okay. And it's done. So the maximum height of that object is 1,156. So from my graph, we found extra stuff. but So this would be where we got the 5 and the 12 from, from those two. Intersection points with 960. Okay. So that will be the 5 and the 12. And then we found all the other stuff. Okay. When will the height of the object? So now we're talking when will the height of the object be at least 960 feet? So that would be from. Is this inclusive or exclusive? Inclusive because it's at least, right? Okay. So that would be this part up here would be at least. So that would be from 5 until 12. When will the height be at most 960 feet? That would be this part down here, right? So it would be from 0 to 5 and 12 to 17. Because once it hits, once it's 17 seconds, it's back on the ground. No, is that the last question? <clears throat> Oops. All right, so then, one last question. Okay. This can be done either on the back page or in your notes or wherever you want to do this one. I-70 west of Denver, okay, now you're going into the mountains west of Denver, has a section of it posted as a 6% grade. This means that 
for a horizontal change of 100 feet, there is a six foot vertical change. So for every 100 feet, you go horizontally, not on the roadway, okay, but horizontally, every 600 feet, you're going up six feet. Okay. Find the slope of that section of the highway. Okay. Well, if I start at the origin, How far out would I go? Horizontal distance would be 100 feet. Vertical distance would be 6 feet. So that would put me at my other point of 100. What would the coordinates of that point be? 100 comma 6. Okay. So based off of that, find me the slope of that highway. If I were to draw a line, because you know the road would be like the line. Find me the slope of that section. I get a slope of 3 over 50. Agree? So on that highway with a 6% grade, what is the horizontal distance required to climb up 25 feet? Hmm. One way of doing it. Now, we could extrapolate out, right? So after 100 feet, we would go up 6. After 200 feet, we would be up 12. After 300 feet, we would be up 18. 400 feet, 24. And we would be up 24. But 24 is not 25, right? OK, so that's not necessarily going to work. Okay. What if we made a line out of this? We can do that, right? Because wouldn't the line just be y equals 3 over 50 x? Yeah? Where x is what? Is x the horizontal or is x the vertical? x is the horizontal. y is the vertical. So what can we, where can we put 25 in our equation? In for what? We can put 25 in for what? And solve for x. Yes? Do it. What do we got? So what's 25 times 50? 1250? Yeah? So what would that be? That would be 400, 16 point and two thirds. Yeah? Agree with that? Who 
would you put? 0.6? Oh, yeah, but you put 0.6? Because 0.6 is not the same as two thirds. You should have, because 12, 3 can't go. Yeah, that works too. That's even better. I like that one even more. Because that's exact, exact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A sign along the highway says 6% grade for the next seven miles. Estimate how many feet of vertical change. So that's X or is that Y in our equation? Y, that's Y, because that's vertical. Okay. There will be along those seven miles. Note one mile is 5,280 feet. Okay. So if I go back to my equation, Y equals 3 over 50 times X, we just got to figure out what X is. What are we going to plug in for X? How'd you come up with that? Because this is miles, right? But we were in feet for our equation. So we got to figure out feet. 7 miles is equal to 7 times 5,280 feet. So that would be, what was it again? 36, 900 and what? 6, 0? And that then gets plugged into there. Gets me. I get that we went in seven miles, we went up 2,217, and what would that be? Three fifths feet. Yes? What what do you need to show it would be three six nine six zero times three um, one eleven thousand eighty eight over five. Okay. That's all I got for you for today. Okay. The rest of the time you can be working on or checking if you're done. I have posted in the room, I've got one up front, I've got one on the back whiteboard answers to the P1, P2, P4, P5. Um, I think we have already. Yes, I have to give them back to you. Yep, yep. And then I'm going to hand out corrections to you right now. I just didn't want to hand them out while I was doing this. Because then all your focus would have been on that instead of on this.